These little ESP12 boards have no obvious way to connect them to your computer, unless you have bought the Node MCU. This Node MCU is actually an ESP12E with added circuitry that gives you the USB port and makes it breadboard friendly. In this video, I will show you many different ways to program these boards from Arduino IDE. I will start with the Node MCU since that is the easiest. Then I go over four different ways to get your code into the small standalone ESP12 boards. In the end, I will link to the next video that explains how to program these boards wirelessly over Wi-Fi. But before we can do that, we need to be able to upload our program over the USB serial connection. The first thing we need to do is prepare Arduino IDE for the ESP8266 microcontroller. Add this URL to the additional boards list in the preference panel. You can find the URL in the description box below. Now open Tools, Boards, Board Manager and uh, search for ESP8266. It should find the ESP8266 by ESP8266 Community. Click Install. Select ESP8266 boards and then uh, Node MCU ESP12E. The ESP12E and F are virtually the same modules except for the antenna shape. The antenna of the ESP12F is supposedly better optimized. For demonstration, I am only going to use the simple blink sketch. I will change the blinking rhythm a little, so it would be more evident that our code actually runs on the microcontroller. A couple of quick flashes and one longer one. Let's upload the blink sketch to the Node MCU. If it has the CH340 USB to serial chip, you may need to install the CH340 drivers. The link is in the description box. Otherwise, it's very straightforward. Select the new COM port that appeared after connecting the USB cable and click Upload. There are many ways to connect to the ESP12E or F module. A dedicated programmer module, you can use a Node MCU to upload code to the plain ESP12 module, a dedicated USB to serial adapter, or with a witty cloud development board. I will start with the dedicated programmer board since it is by far the easiest. I have two different kinds of it but they are functionally the same. Just snap it on and connect the USB cable. It should show up in the ports menu. Similarly to the Node MCU, if it has a CH340 chip, you may need to install the chip's drivers. Just click upload and done. The biggest downside here is that you can't use the programmer board after you have soldered your ESP12 board to your circuit. One possible workaround is to do all the subsequent programming over Wi-Fi. More on that in the next video. The next three methods require connecting some wires. The ESP12 module is not breadboard or pin header friendly, so I also ordered a bunch of these adapter boards which makes it all much easier. Let's continue with the order of simplicity. I'm going to use this Node MCU board to program this ESP12F module. The idea behind it is very simple. I will disable the ESP12 soldered onto the Node MCU and then connect the external ESP board instead. So let's pull the chip enable pin to the ground. Now this is disabled. For this module to run, you need to pull its chip enable pin to 3.3 volts 
and uh, GPIO 15 to the ground. But I don't have to connect any extra wires, since uh, those two resistors on the adapter board already do that. The middle one here is a 0 ohm resistor that connects the adapter board's VCC to the ESP12 module's VCC. We don't have to worry about it right now, but it comes to play with the Witty Cloud development board. Connect the 3.3V power and ground pins. Connect the D3 pin of the Node MCU to GPIO0 of the ESP12 board. And reset to reset. These connections are necessary for switching the module to programming mode. And finally connect the RX to RX and TX to TX. Note that uh, these wires are not crossed. RX goes directly to RX. You only need to make a cross if the modules communicate with each other. But in this case we are taking over the main module. Now connect the USB cable and click upload. As you can see, the code was uploaded into the external module. Next, let's connect an external USB to serial adapter. The 3.3V output of the USB to serial adapter board is not strong enough to power the ESP8266 microcontroller. I am using this breadboard friendly power module. Make sure that the jumper is set to 3.3V. Again, I am using the ESP module soldered onto the adapter board. If you don't have this adapter board, you should use a 10K resistor to pull the chip enable input to VCC and another 10K resistor to pull GPIO 15 to the ground. These connections are necessary for the module to run. As I said before, this adapter board has uh, those pull-up and pull-down resistors pre soldered First, let's connect the VCC and ground wires. It is necessary to add a 100 microfarad capacitor near the VCC input. Now this ESP12 module is ready to run. This is the same blink cycle we uploaded previously. The minimum connections you need to make between the USB to serial adapter and the ESP12 board is the ground wire and the RX and TX signal wires. RX to TX and TX to RX. The cross between the RX and TX is necessary since the USB module sends data from its transmit line to the ESP module's receive line and vice versa. With these connections it is possible to program the ESP module, but uh, since two wires are missing we need to switch it manually to the programming mode. To do that we need to connect the GPIO0 to the ground and make a restart. Let's change the blinking cycle to verify that the new code was uploaded to the device. As before, if your USB to serial adapter has the CH340 chip on it, then you may need to install drivers for it. After a successful upload, we need to disconnect the GPIO0 and restart again. If your USB to serial adapter has accessible RTS and TTR signals, you can also make full connections that don't need manual resetting. Some simpler modules may not have those. Use two 10K resistors 
to pull the ESP modules reset and GPIO0 to ECC. And then connect the USB to serial adapters RTS to reset and uh, DTR to GPIO0. Those two pull-up resistors are necessary while the USB cable is disconnected from the adapter. It ensures that the ESP module goes to running mode while the USB connection is not actively driving it. Now there is no longer need for a manual reset. Let's change the blinking sequence again and upload the code. The fourth and final method is to use the Witty Cloud development board. You get these two boards, the USB programmer board and the ESP12 board with some extra sensors. For this method, you need to use these adapter boards. It matches the Witty board's footprint. Warning! You can't just plug it in. The VCC output of the Witty Cloud development board is 5 volts, but the VCC input of this adapter board is connected directly to the VCC input of the ESP12 board via this 0 ohm resistor. The VCC of the ESP12 board must be 3.3 volts. To fix this, we need to desolder this uh, 0 ohm resistor and add a 3.3 volt voltage regulator. The PCB already has a footprint for it. Please note that the middle pin of the footprint is the voltage regulator's input. Some regulators like the AMS1117 has the middle pin as the output. You can't use those here. I am using an HT7333A. It has a 3.3 volt output and the input range is from 3.5 to 12 volts. We should also add a 100 to 1000 microfarad capacitor between the voltage regulator's output and the ground. Unfortunately, the PCB doesn't have a footprint for it. So I'll just solder this 100 microfarad surface mount capacitor between these pins. After these modifications, we can just plug it onto the programmer board. As before, if your programmer board has the CH340 chip, then you may need to install drivers. This is an excellent solution, since now you have a breadboard-friendly minimal ESP12 board that you can plug into your circuit or plug it into a programmer board if you need to make code updates. Now that we have established the USB connection, it is possible to start programming the ESP8266 over Wi-Fi. I'm currently in the process of making a video about it. I will link it here as soon as it is ready. Thank you for watching.